Hi everyone, welcome back to our YouTube classes. In this session, I am going to present you summary of the 2D chapter written by Count Leo Tolstoy. Before knowing into the concept, let's look into the brief introduction about the author. Count Leo Tolstoy is a famous Russian writer who writes primarily novels and fictions. Count Leo Tolstoy is very famous for his two long narrative. The first one is War and Peace published in the year of 1869 and the second one is Anna Karenina published in the year of 1877. Throughout his fiction, he brought out a lot of paradoxical complicated personas. After the moral crisis in the year of 1870s, he turned out as like a moral thinker and a social reformer. Okay, in this chapter, he brought out well human being kind, one thing, and the second one is he brought out inefficiency of the government in the present scenario. One thing you should remember this chapter is bring you a lot of sarcasm and humor and in this chapter the criminal treated in an innovative fashion look at the chapter and the look at the uh, concept how we brought out the inefficiency of the government which they are going to bring their own verdict here he sketched the toy little kingdom monaco it is a tiny little kingdom the tiny little kingdom lies near the border of the France and Italy on the shore of the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, many a small country town can boast more inhabitants than this kingdom. In this kingdom there are only 7000 people are there, only 7000 people. And if the land of the kingdom were divided for each inhabitants, even they wouldn't get an acre for each inhabitants. So, Monaco is the tiny little kingdom, very less in population, very less in land mass. Only 7000 population are there. Then he continued the story here. So, that is why he called Monaco kingdom is a toy kingdom because it consists only less population, only 7000 population and less land mass. That is why he called it is a toy kingdom. But in the toy kingdom, there we have a real kinglet and he has a palace, courtiers, ministers, bishop and general and an army. Army. So you might lend your ears towards my words. In the toy kingdom, there the kinglet of the Monaco had an army. The army of the Monaco kingdom consists 60 men. Look at here, 60 men, only 60 men. And as well as in the other kingdom, in Monaco also, they used to collect the tax. Tax on the tobacco, tax on the wine, tax on the spirit, tax on the poll. Here, poll tax representing the individual tax. But although in that kingdom, people would like to drink, would like to smoke, as elsewhere in the other kingdom. Look at here, the king, by collecting the tax from the wine, tobacco, spirit and all the other uh, aspects, but it is not sufficient to him to feed his courtiers, ministers, bishop and an army. That is why the king found a new special source of revenue from the gaming house. So what was the reason he found the special source of revenue from the gaming house? Because he need to feed his courtiers, ministers, bishop, generals and an army. Most importantly, he want to live as like a real king and he need to lead a luxurious life in the kingdom. That is why he found a new special source of revenue from the gaming house. Gaming house are also called as a gambling house where people play roulette. It is a one kind of a game. Roulette is a one kind of a game. Whether the people win or lose, 
द कीपर ऑफ द गेमिंग हाउस गेट अ लॉट ऑफ इनकम प्रॉफिट आउट ऑफ देयर प्रॉफिट द कीपर्स ऑफ द गेमिंग हाउस हैड टू पे अ लार्ज सम अमाउंट टू द किंगलेट ऑफ द मोनाको इन द नेम ऑफ द स्पेशल सोर्स ऑफ रेवेन्यू वन थिंग यू शुड रिमेंबर वाई द कीपर्स ऑफ द गेमिंग हाउस had to pay large sum of the amount or the money to the monaco kinglet in the name of the special source of revenue do you know what was the reason behind that this kind of a gaming house existed only in the monaco kingdom some of the other german sovereign countries they started to this kind of a gaming house but some years ago the german sovereign countries were forbidden that kind of a gaming house in their country do you know what was the reason here in the gaming house the people used to go to the roulette table and they are going to betting and they are going to lose their earned money not only they are uh, sufficient for that even they are taking the loan from their friends or someone else and they are risking their money too finally what is the result at the end of the game they are losing their earned money and the loan money too then in despair in a sadness by losing in the roulette they are going to hanging themselves drawing themselves and finally they are committing a suicide so when german sovereign countries gave a permission to open the gambling house in their countries the suicide cases are increased for the reason german forbade their rulers to make money from this kind of a dirty business that is why they forbade it they prohibited they stopped but in this toy kingdom who will going to question to the kinglet of the monaco who will going to question him because he is the king of the kingdom none of one going to question to the king that is why he had a monopoly over the gaming house look at here the term monopoly here representing the single ownership uh, about that gaming house he had a monopoly over that gaming house so in that entire european continent if anybody wants to play the roulette or the gaming house they need to go to the monaco whether they win or lose look at here whether they win or lose but the king gains by it the but the king getting a lot of benefit from it because the keepers of the gaming house they have to pay a large sum of the amount to the monaco kinglet in the name of the special source of revenue so here whether the people win or lose it do not matter to the monaco kinglet he is getting lot of benefit and profit he knew the monaco kinglet knew that the gaming is a dirty business but although he gave a permission to open the gaming house because he need to survive he need to feed his courtiers ministers bishop general and an army that is why although he knew that was a dirty business but he gave a permission to open the gaming house in his kingdom then he told a famous proverb here what is that you can't earn a stone palace by honest labor it is a famous proverb which is quoted in the textbook he knew that it was a dirty business but he need to live he need to live as like a real king he need to feed his courtiers and all the uh, people of in this kingdom that is why he gave a permission for that see here the king is concentrating more his luxurious life rather than his duties he need to make his coronation he need to make his leaves leaves in a sense the visitors meeting after the getting up the visitor used to sit in front of the king and king used to uh, meet them leaves then he need to make a reward 
sentence pardon and he had a court of justice judges council committee he had everything but it is in a smaller scale remember the monaco kinglet had everything but it is in a smaller scale because it is a toy kingdom monaco kingdom is a toy kingdom that is why uh, he settled all these things here so this is a description of the monaco kingdom so our actual story start from here in the monaco kingdom uh, the people of the monaco kingdom were peaceable till there but what happened some years ago a murder was committed in the toy prince domains and the people were very peaceable and such a thing had not happened before in that kingdom then the justice of the monaco kingdom and the judges and the barricader they caught the criminal and judged the case in the most judicial manner and finally as the law directs of the monaco kingdom they decide to execute the man's head cut off so as far as so good they submitted their verdict the judges verdict to the king and king read it and confirmed it if the fellow must be executed execute him the king told to the judges so he is a criminal he made a crime murdered the man so he must be executed execute him he gave a permission to the judges and the ministers of the monaco government when they are proceeding that verdict the monaco government faced the problem they faced the problem hitch hitch in the sense problem here yeah. so what was that when they are proceeding the verdict of the king that they are going to execute in the man's head cut off in the toy kingdom neither they had a guillotine machine nor an executioner this is the problem they were faced in the earlier then the ministers consider the matter and they decided to write a letter enquiry letter to the french government one thing you should remember monaco kingdom lies near the border of the france and italy and here the ministers decided to write a letter enquiry letter to the french government do you know what was the reason behind that because guillotine machine is very famous from the french revolution itself and the guillotine machine is highly used in the uh, region terror in the year of robespierre in the year of 1793 Robespierre used this, and finally the Robespierre uh, were also killed by using the same guillotine machine here. That is why the ministers of the Monaco government decided to send a enquiry letter to the French government for this reason, and they wrote an enquiry letter to the French government asking them to lend a guillotine machine and an expert to the French uh, Monaco government. after a week they sent a letter after a week they received the prompt reply like this the french government replied to the monaco government here that they are ready to send guillotine machine and an expert and they asked to give them a 16000 francs for sending a guillotine machine and an expert the ministers took the letter and they lied in front of the king king took the letter read it and thought over the letter and told to the ministers 16000 francs and he told to the ministers the wretch is not worth the money the wretch is not worth the money and he told 16000 francs it is more than a 2 francs on the whole population because he need to collect the money from the people itself that is why he didn't agree it still mean to the more than a 2 francs on the whole population of the monaco kingdom only 7000 people are there and he had a fear too if he going to collect the tax from the people the people won't stand for his decision one thing and the second thing is the people might cause a riot in his kingdom riot in sense disturb in this kingdom in the toy kingdom that is why the king 
didn't agree to pay 16,000 francs for the guillotine machine and an ex executor, sorry, expert to the French government. And he urged to the ministers, find a cheaper way to dealing with this rascal. Then the ministers considered the matter and they decided to write the same similar enquiry letter to the Italy. Here, to write a letter to the Italy, they had a two reason here. The first reason is, French government is a republican government and they had not any proper respect to the king. King in the sense, Monaco king, king late. And the Italian government is a brother monarch. Look at the term, brother monarch to the Monaco government. Brother monarch. They called the Italian government as a brother monarch to him because Italian government is ruling by the monarchy system as well as in Monaco kingdom also ruling by the monarchy system. So king would like to help the another king. That is why the ministers of the Monaco government called Italian uh, government as like a brother monarch to them. And uh, they also thought it they might do the things in a cheaper way. Then the same similar enquiry letter to the sent to the Italian government and after uh, they also received the reply from the Italian government. They told like this that their pleasure for sending a guillotine machine and executioner and they asked them to give them a 12,000 francs including traveling expense. Look at here, the Italian government asked Monaco government to give them a 12,000 francs including traveling expense. Then that uh, letter was lied in front of the king. King told to the ministers, the rascal is not really worth the money. This criminal rascal, the term rascal representing here, that murderer, that criminal, he is not worth that money. And he urged to the ministers, you must find some cheaper way to dealing with this rascal. Still, 12,000 francs is nearly a two francs on the whole population of that Monaco kingdom. So the king didn't agree for that. Then, what was to be done? The minister again considered the matter and they were discussing each other. And when they were discussing each other, one of the minister hit upon an idea that they would like to ask to the generals to find a soldier, one who can cut the man's head cut off in a rough and homely fashion. So for that reason, the general asked and they told to the general, the minister told to the general of the Monaco kingdom, find a soldier to cut a man's head cut off. Here the minister gave a two reasons to the general. One is, the soldier wouldn't bother to kill the man in the war field. One thing. And the second thing is, they won't, uh, sorry, the soldier were especially trained for the execution of the man itself. In the sense, kill the man itself. So for that reason, the ministers asked to the general and general received the guidelines and went and thought it, uh, so talked with the soldiers to see whether anyone would like to take the job. But none of the soldiers undertake the job. And the 60 men, entirely the 60 men are there in the Monaco kingdom, especially in the army. They told, no, we can't do that one. And they told to the general, we don't know how to do it. And also they told, this is not the thing we have been taught. So what was to be done? Look, in the beginning they wrote a letter to the French government. They replied 16,000 francs to give them for a guillotine machine and an expert. King didn't agree. Then they wrote a letter to the brother monarch Italy. Italian government asked them to give a 12,000 francs. But king didn't agree. Then they decide to do the job with the soldiers. They also denied their offer. What was to be done? Then they made a committee, subcommittee, council 
and finally the minister decided to alter the death sentence to the life imprisonment life imprisonment so the king agreed to here so king agreed to change the death sentence to the life imprisonment so when they are proceeding that verdict and that uh, sentence once again the monaco government faced the problem here one thing you should understand the king agreed to change the death sentence to the life imprisonment behind that there were two reasons are there what was those look at here the first reason is here the if you change the death sentence to the life imprisonment one thing is it would come in a cheaper way so less expensive and the second thing is if they agree to change the death sentence to the life imprisonment for the murderer it would show the prince mercy towards the criminal so these two reasons were behind uh, behind that why they changed the death sentence to the life imprisonment these two reasons were behind that got it okay they changed the death sentence to the life imprisonment then they faced the problem when they are proceeding this life imprisonment punishment once again they faced the problem hit what was that look at here in the toy kingdom they didn't have a suitable prison for the man's life imprisonment suitable prison only small lock ups were there in that uh, toy kingdom people sometimes kept temporarily in that small lock ups but they didn't have a permanent fit for life imprisonment prison however the minister of the monaco government found a place which can do that in in the sense which can uh, uh, leave the prisoner life imprisonment in the prison itself finally they found a place can uh, execute the sorry life imprisonment the punishment here and they put the young fellow inside the prison look at here young fellow the term young fellow is very important here young fellow representing here the murderer the criminal the criminal when he committed the murder he was still a young and healthy person so they finally found the prison which can uh, uh, fit for the life imprisonment and they placed the young fellow the murderer inside the prison and the ministers of the monaco government appointed the guard to watch over the criminal and also they assigned the work to the guard the guard has to bring the food of the criminals from the king's palace kitchen look at here the guard duty is to keep on eye on the criminal and the guard uh, should have to bring the man's food that criminal food from the palace kitchen got it that what happened so after one year passed here the kinglet of the monaco would like to look about his account the expenditure income everything so when he was uh, overlooking his account he found a new expenditure that new expenditure for the keep of the criminal it is a small either amount small uh, amount it is only 600 francs they spent for the keep of the criminal for one year look at here 600 francs only but the king thought it over and he count about all these things look at here that eng fellow inside the prison and is a healthy and a eng and the king thought it over he might live for a 50 years and he made a calculation uh, 600 into 50 years that was a uh, 30000 francs when the 30000 francs uh, it came in front of his eyes it was a huge amount to him because it is a toy kingdom and king decided and summoned the meeting of the ministers and he told to the ministers you must find some cheaper way to dealing with this rascal and he urged to the ministers the present plan is too expensive 
why it was too expensive because he made a calculation here uh, 600 into 50 years because he thought it over he might live for 50 years so the answer is 30000 francs he need to pay for the keep of, for a, for a life imprisonment that is why he told to the ministers the present plan is too expensive then the ministers consider the matter and made a committee sub committee everything and they were discussing each other in their deliberation one of the soldier hit upon a idea that they would like to dismiss the guard when they are negotiating each other the ministers one of the minister hit upon an idea to dismiss the guard and the second minister told to the uh, ministers that the criminal will run away well the first speaker the first minister said like this well he will run away let be hanged himself okay the ministers decided to dismiss the guard and they told to the king and king too agreed and the morning they dismissed the guard and they were waited what will happen everything happened during the dinner time here during the night time here the criminal came out from the prison even not for looking for his guard he straight away went to the palace kitchen took what was given to him because it is his, his food what was given to him and came back directly to the prison shut the door on his own hand and stayed inside he did not show a least sign of running away from the prison the ministers of the monaco kingdom waited for one more day the next day the same thing occurred he came out from the prison went to the palace kitchen took what was given to him and came back to the prison shut the door himself so he is not willing to go away from the prison itself so what was to be done again the ministers discussed the matter and the ministers decided to tell the criminal straight out then the justice of the uh, ministers brought the criminal in front of them and they told to the criminal that we do not want to keep you in the prison you may go wherever you want the king won't mind they told to the criminal like this you may go where you want and king won't mind for that then the criminal replied to the ministers i dare king won't mind it he, he replied where shall i go what can i do you have ruined my character here ruined in sense destroyed my character if i go out people turn their back on me where shall i go and he made a complaint in the earlier you gave a uh, punishment to me to head uh, death sentence you ought to do that one but you did not do you did not execute my head then you change the verdict from death sentence to life imprisonment then you placed me inside the prison and appointed the guard to bring my own food later what you did you dismissed the guard and i went myself to bring my own food there also i didn't complain about you now you are telling me that you may go away from here you may do whatever you wish but i won't go away from the prison look at here he is refusing to run away from the prison here by giving all these explanation one thing is the ministers of the government had ruined the ruined the criminal character here and if he go outside people will turn their back on him and he had a complaint in the beginning the uh, gave punishment of the death sentence but they changed the death sentence to life imprisonment there he did not complain then uh, when they are executing the life imprisonment they appointed the god to look on him to bring the food his food from the palace kitchen later the ministers of the monaco government dismissed the god then he went 
himself to bring his own food now the minister told him that they won't keep him inside the prison so criminal didn't agree he reluctant to go away from the prison here he told the ministers you may do whatever you wish but i won't go away from the prison then again the matter was serious what was to be do again the ministers consider the matter discuss the matter and finally the king wanted to get rid of his this matter here he wanted to get rid of it he wanted to release from that matter from that case and finally the monaco government hit upon a idea to offer him a pension look at here uh, when the ministers gave a idea of offering a pension the sum was fixed actually they spent 600 francs per one year for the keep of the criminal in the prison the same amount 600 francs was fixed for his pension and here the king also wanted to get rid of the case and the minister too and finally they fixed the pension of the 600 francs per year and they decided and announced to the criminal and criminal told to the ministers uh, okay as far as regular you undertake the job i on the condition i am willing to go away from the prison look at here he wanted to take regular pension so on that condition the criminal agreed to go away from the prison so the matter was closed here so they offered the 600 francs to the criminal in the term of pension so criminal took a promises to take and give a, a regular uh, payment pension to him so on that condition he agreed to go away from the prison and the criminal received advance look at here advance one third of his annuity so annuity in sense totally per one year the sum was fixed for 600 francs in advance the criminal received 1 by 3 uh, in an annuity in the sense 200 francs he received then left the city and he emigrated to the uh, just across the frontier of the kingdom frontier in the sense border of the kingdom there he settled and by using that money he brought a bit of land and started market gardening a flower business mark gardening business and thereafter the criminal lived very peaceably he came to the monaco kingdom at the proper time received the pension then he went to the roulettes table stakes two or three francs sometime win sometime lose then go back to the his home so this is the thing he mentioned here and one thing you should remember thereafter the criminal did not do any kind of a crime criminal activity in that country where he was settled now it is a very good thing that uh, he did not do any criminal activity and the country of the his own uh, native place right now where he settled they won't mind to execute him and keep him for the life imprisonment but the good thing is the criminal did not do any kind of a criminal activity where he settled this is the story which brought out a lot of sarcasm look at here for the criminal they made lot of changes here one thing you should remember the king is more concerned about his luxurious life he wanted to be as like a real king he forgot his duties and here the criminal treated in an innovative fashion and most importantly ill gotten gains finally spent in an ill mannered way here the king of the monaco had a option instead of releasing him he might continue the same punishment so he offered the 600 francs as a pension 
instead of that one if he continued his punishment at least in that kingdom they might have a little bit fear people won't do any kind of a crime activity but what he did he released the criminal and offered him as a pension 600 francs so one thing you should remember ill gotten gains never let us to lead a good healthy life that instead of releasing him releasing the criminal by offering the 600 francs per annual or the year he might appointed him somewhere else in his kingdom he might give a job look at here by he also offering the money to him along with he would like to take the work from the criminal itself he did not do that one so these are the criticism which offered in the play in, in this uh, story okay have a uh, wonderful time you have spent with me if you have any kind of uh, doubts in your mind ask me comment me in the comment box definitely i will reply to you okay and if you like the video please hit the like button share the video to your friends few mates and have a nice day thank you very much bye bye